Welcome back and uh, another talking technical and we must look at copper. There's just no other way. I mean, this metal is showing us that the world is rapidly starting to recover. I'm a little bit worried because I see that the oil price is also ticking higher. And um, I'm under the belief that while the oil price is ticking higher, all the other commodities uh, maybe not the golds and the silvers of the world, but all the other commodities are starting to show that inflation is on the rise again and that the interest rates that we see coming through is probably not going to, um, you can almost say, curb some inflation. But if I look at the copper price, I mean, this is the a weekly chart. There's the 40-week moving average. That 40-week moving average turned into a support at 382 now the moment that 382 turned into a support i mean we saw this beautiful rally i do see a little bit of a lamp oil formation here and a lamp oil formation makes me a little bit worried because i think the rally is just maybe just too steep and too fast but for me the important thing is can you guys see that this is a a beautiful support line for long it was a resistance line for almost from 2021, April 2021, all the way through to May 2022, it was a support line and then it turned into a resistance. And for almost a year, it stayed below that resistance line. And that made everybody, of course, very, very nervous. But while it is above this line and that sits at 412, Two. While it's above 412, we can easily see the copper price ticking up even further. My next move to the top will be above 430. That will confirm new momentum to the top. And then we can maybe see 449. But I think the world is in, in big problems with copper. And maybe this copper price is telling us that the demand is picking up. And I doubt if there is enough production to actually show us that um, the world can carry on the way it's going without producing some copper or exploring some new mines. Well, the Fushini Group, it is a retailer and I know in South Africa a lot of these retailers were a little bit under pressure since last year, um, 2021, it started to drop, 2020 it was almost in a consolidation phase. I can remember that we showed this head and shoulder formation. We were worried about that head and shoulder formation. There you are. I can maybe just show you. There was the left shoulder. There was the head. There was the right shoulder. And what happened? It played out to the T. It gave us a little bit of a bounce. It came back again. Classic water formation. You can see it's almost just selling right through down to the bottom end but i think the fushini group is maybe starting to show some early signs of a recovery now if i look at this let's use that support line if i look at that i just want to draw it in there and you guys will immediately see what i see there was a tiny little let's just show you here there you are there was almost a tiny little tweezer bottomy on a weekly chart so for two weeks it came back to test that level of 98 rand 41 cents since then it rallied beautifully up it tested this resistance line that is sitting at 103.17 it came back and now it turned that into a support but the only thing that worries me is look at this rally this is a steep steep rally almost like what we've seen in the past and Fushini likes to do that it rallies up, it comes back. It rallies up, it comes back. It does exactly the same. So I think after this beautiful rally, we'll probably see a pullback again. Now we don't know at which level it will find support. Hopefully it will come back to that line. I'm going to draw that line in there. Hopefully it can come back to test 105.20. And if it bounces off there, maybe we can look at buying into the share because if it bounces off there, you can maybe use your stop loss 10103 or even a tighter one at 10310. But it looks like that the Fushini group slowly but surely is starting to turn around. And this is a classic case again. If you see a waterfall formation like this, everything selling down, then I always envisage in my mind a V reversal and where's the V reversal I'll show you there 
there you see it. After a, a ugly sell-off, like a waterfall formation that you've seen there, you usually see a beautiful V reversal, and that is positive. Well, let's look at Celestica. Now, Celestica is listed on the NASDAQ, and I think it was um, John that asked me about Celestica. Now, John, this is now a classic case of if you did not buy the share, you actually lost out. Because what happens here is, look at this, and there is a beautiful inverse head and shoulder. There's the 40-week moving average. It turned that into a support. Look at that classical goodbye kiss, that positive goodbye kiss. What is a goodbye kiss? Let's maybe show the viewers here. It is when it breaks above the 40-week, it comes back to test the line. If that is tested and it goes up, we see it as a positive technical goodbye kiss. And then usually the share will rally from there. But look at this beautiful chart here. There's the left shoulder. There's the right shoulder. Oh, sorry, there's the head, excuse me. And there's the right shoulder. And what happened? It almost played out to the T. So that's why I say you may be a little bit late to chase this company. I'm always nervous and, and the viewers know by now that I try not to chase shares when, when they already rallied a lot. I know a lot of people say no, they can just go higher. Um, they probably right. But I, I always say to myself, if a share rallies from $10.80 to $13.80 in a matter of two weeks, that's a 30% gain. That's a beautiful rally. So I would rather wait for something to consolidate. But I mean, John, if you want to chase it up, there's the target at $13.84. It's trading now at $13.18. I doubt if there's much left. But of course, if you want to chase the momentum, I will use that as my stop loss. There's the spot. I will use $12.52 as my stop loss to protect some capital. Well, let's look at the Ford Motor Company. Um, if I look at this chart, first of all, the chart was sold off quite aggressively. Um, beautiful rally, sold off, and now it's trying to find its feet. This is almost the same scenario. Um, it's almost a chart of two stories. There you are. What makes me a little bit worried is the following. Let's use that. Oh, there's a classic line for us. There you are. There's the left shoulder. There's the head. And there's the multiple right shoulders. But for me, I say to myself, we are so close to this 40-week moving average that if it breaks above that 40-week moving average and that sits at $13.30, if it can break above $13.30, we'll maybe see the first sign that these right shoulders can be wiped off the table. But, I mean, there's $13.30. There's some other resistances that, that it must break. First of all, it will be that 40-week moving average. Let's put in another resistance so that you can get them and see them as well. There you are. There's another one. There you are. I mean, it's 13.30. It is 13.30 on the dot there. Then we go to $14.50. And then the next one will be $16.20. Now, if it breaks above that, this right shoulder will be wiped off the table. And the world is just so optimistic at the moment. I think we can maybe see that some investors will chase the share up and they will use this neckline as a, a stop loss. And that stop loss will sit at $11.30. But there's something interesting to me. In markets, I've learned over the years that everybody is just sometimes so bullish or so bearish that the market catches them out. So if you look at this, this head and shoulder formation, it's either going to break up or it's going to break down, and then if it's really going to turn out nasty for, for Ford, where can it go to? Um, it's one of those cases, can you remember Sassel many years ago? I said, I hope it cannot do that because uh, the share is such a good company, and it did exactly play it out on that head and shoulder formation that no one of us could even believe that it can happen. But for me, I think, let's look at that 40-week moving average. I will look at that. Maybe your first initial tiny little buy will be above 40 week moving average, or above that. That is that 1330 level. And then maybe use that stop loss on the neckline. And if that breaks, 
I think maybe there's an opportunity that this share can maybe work into higher lows, but that will be my target. That is the 1330 level, and we all know that if it breaks above that 1450, that right shoulder, that will be the second optimistic sign for, for some investors. But let's hope that 4 does not break below this line, because then things can really turn out to be very, very nasty for them. Let's look at FedEx. Now, FedEx is one of those companies we most of us use or we make use of logistical companies. And once again, look at it all the way. It fell away below its 40-week moving average. It's working its way all the way up. And for me, once again, I will say I will wait for that 40-week moving average. That, that tells me that this company maybe wants to turn around because what happened in the past when it broke above that, you saw a beautiful rally. Look what happened since June 2021. It tries for almost two years to get above this 40-week moving average. It had that one attempt. It was briefly above that. Then it fell below that. And let's bet on that. If it's a 40-week moving average at $195, if that can turn into a support, we can maybe see a beautiful relief bounce here from, from FedEx. And the next resistance line will be there. I just want to show you there it is, 202. And let's hope that that plays out to the T so that we can make use of that. But let's stick to our stop loss. Our stop loss will be 172. Below 172, we know that we are wrong. And then maybe it's time to just sit on the sidelines.